Welcome to Community Presbyterian Church. This 20th Sunday after Pentecost, it is good to see you all in the house of the Lord this morning. Lots of announcements for this week. First of all, the Women's Book Club will resume tomorrow, Monday, at 2.45 p.m. in the assembly room. Book selections will be made, so ladies, bring your suggestions. And a schedule will be set. Unfortunately, the bathrooms down in the assembly room are currently closed. So we would ask you to please come upstairs and use the ones back here for the time being until they are open and available for use. At which point, we will let you know. Also, uh, this morning I had the pleasure of zooming in to join our Sunday school class, which takes place at 10 a.m. every Sunday. And I just have to tell you all that our Sunday school teachers are doing a phenomenal job, first of all. And second of all, our kiddos are just still shining forth all the warmth and joy that they've always shared. And so I would just put a word out to all of you who may have kids or grandkids who haven't considered joining in the Zoom Sunday school half hour to think about it. Although it is a new way of doing ministry during the times of COVID, it's definitely working. It's an excellent adaptation. So here is an invitation from your preacher. Also, next week, we will close out the unit we've been working on, on the names of God, and we'll introduce a new one on different types of prayer, how to pray, what is it? A big question for all of us, especially the littlest of us. Thanksgiving, uh, the turkey and ham drive continues. Again, this year, we're not asking for actual turkeys and hams. We're asking for financial contributions, so please give as you are able. Halloween drive-in. Our event is getting ready to rock and roll. Halloween is coming. And uh, Halloween evening, the parking lot will open at 6 p.m. Showtime is at 7. We'll be watching The Wizard of Oz on a big screen. And um, there's going to be a photo booth available. So anybody, please consider coming in your costume so we can just get a priceless picture of you. And um, looking forward to it. Registration is open online. You can call the office if you'd like to register your vehicle. Let us know. Next Sunday, I'm going to be bringing you all a Bible study. It will not, however, be from me. It's going to be from an author who does a much better job of Bible study than me, and his name is Max Lucado. You might have heard of him. Yeah, um, he's pretty phenomenal. He's going to be sharing with us before Amen. It is an adult Bible study on prayer. And so, after church in the memorial room, we're going to screen it and talk it through. But, because HarperCollins is really good at ministry, they have a package that I purchased for the church so that you all can receive it digitally. Um, and so expect more news on that in the e-news and um, this week and information about it online. How if you're uncomfortable coming to join us on Sunday mornings after worship, how you can participate in this Bible study from the comfort of your home. It will take place over the course of four weeks and I invite you all to join me. Lastly, session meets this Wednesday and bells meet on Thursday. That's about it for this week. Plenty going on. Let us now turn our hearts and minds to the Lord. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we enter into a time of worship this morning to devote ourselves, our hearts, minds, and spirits, and our lives to you. God, you are first in our hearts. And though we struggle to live that out actively in the moments before us, all the time, every day, every week, Lord, we do come to you in worship on 
Sunday morning to remind ourselves of your primary place in our hearts. That we might start each week anew with you being our priority. Lord, give us space. Give us sacred space to carve out room in our hearts for where you belong. So that as we exit out of the sanctuary this morning, as we exit out of our time of worship, Lord, that we might carry you exactly where you belong in a primary position as our top priority. We pray these things in Christ.
mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. Therefore, I declare to you in the strong name of Jesus, you are forgiven. Be at peace. Amen. Waited for him inside. 
yuck. The farmer pulled out all that slimy pulp and wrapped it up in an old newspaper. Off to the compost pile it went, never to be seen again. And then something really exciting happened. The pumpkin got a new face. The farmer carved a triangle for each eye. Pumpkins have eyes that don't blink or turn away. They see everything. He neatly carved a little square for a nose and then a big, wide smile. What happened next was wonderful. The farmer put a small, white candle down inside the pumpkin and touched the wick with a flame. How that pumpkin glowed. As the sky grew darker, the pumpkin on the porch was shining brighter than ever. When people saw the smiling pumpkin, they smiled back. All the neighbors knew that once again, the farmer had turned a simple pumpkin into a simply glorious sight. In the same way, God the Father offers his children the chance to be made new, full of joy and full of light shining like stars in a dark world. The end. Now we turn to our Old Testament lesson. From the book of Exodus, chapter 33, verses 12 through 23. This is known as Moses' intercession. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways, so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people, he said. My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to them, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with us? In this way we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim before you the name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, See, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in, in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Now our gospel text for today continues from the book of Matthew. Chapter 22, verses 15 through 22. This is the question about paying taxes. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him, him being Jesus, in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere, and teach the way of God in accordance with truth, and show deference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, the emperor's. 
Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. This is the word of the Lord. To which we say, Thanks be to God.
out your help, your light, and your truth, which we call on this day and always in Christ's name. Everyone's favorite topic. <laughs> Timely, too, since we just had the extended deadline this past week. Tax evasion is a flight of fancy we all sometimes dream about. You know you thought about it. Maybe even dreamt about it. And dream we may, dare we may not. We gotta pay the man. We have to get back to the government. Paying taxes isn't a question, but this parable asks, asks about more than coins. It asks to whom you will pay your allegiance, and who in turn will you betray in so doing. Pick the Lord of the land and betray your God. Pick God and turn your back on Caesar. As always, this moral dilemma is pressing. We want to be good stewards of what God has given us, just as the Romans did. We want to usher in the kingdom to help realize God's dream that it would be on earth as it is in heaven. We are currently approaching the presidential election. And this question hangs in the balance in a major way. To which modern day Caesar, we pay our dues when we cast our votes. Will we, in so doing, betray our Christian ethics as we endorse one candidate over another? Jesus, interestingly, isn't concerned about our citizenship harming our Christianity, at least in this parable. He boldly claims that you can pay Caesar his due and not affect your standing in Christ. He's claiming that Christians can be good Roman citizens, which means he's also suggesting the novel notion for us today who are so polarized as a country that Trump supporters and Biden supporters can be equally good Christians. No matter who you honor in this world, you are still capable of honoring God to the fullest. Be a good citizen, be a good Christian. The two are separate beatitudes, if you will, and they ask for different kinds of action. Honor both the Lord of the land and the Lord of all creation simultaneously by paying Caesar in coins and paying God in the currency of the heavenly kingdom. The question that remains unanswered is how we do just that. What would kingdom currency look like anyway? When is our heavenly tax due? And how much do we owe? Therein lies the subtle force of Christ's message for us today. There is no entry fee to the kingdom. There is no annual due to pay. We do not have to dig into our pockets to belong to God's kingdom. Even if there were dues to pay, all of us would be welcomed with open arms, whether we were paid up or not. We certainly aren't going to be fined for missing a portion of our dues, should we have had them. And we wouldn't have interest to pay if we didn't calculate our taxes correctly, just as we aren't threatened with jail time if we neglect to pay. We, as God's children, are instead given a big old tax refund. Think about times when you've gotten those checks. Maybe it was a long time ago. It's been a while for me, but when I worked for hourly wages, I was so excited to get what felt like an extra payday. Instead of asking something from us, God gives freely to us. We don't owe anything in return. 
We just have to take that refund check from the Lord of Lords and enjoy it. God, as a loving parent, of course, hopes we're going to invest it for future use. But our great provider isn't worried about it being spent even all up at once on something fun. Because if we do use it up, family of God, we're going to get another one. Even though we don't get kingdom taxes annually, we do get these refunds regularly. God is in the business of doling out gifts to his children. His business is sharing blessings, pouring them out on his beloved, not recouping them as Caesar does. As a child of the covenant, you are well provided for by the good Lord. It doesn't mean you're going to be rolling in cash like screwed Van Duck. But it does mean that your dues are paid already. You don't have to worry about that. Your standing with God is not and never will be contingent on what you give. Nor is it contingent upon whom you give to in this world. It does matter that you pay your taxes this year on anybody getting in trouble here. And God expects that you do that. It also matters that you vote. But your faith doesn't hang in the balance between two candidates. It doesn't make you less of a Christian if you pay into a tax system that is inevitably corrupt, be it a Roman Empire or modern day America. God wants us to give unto the Lord in an utterly distinct manner. We don't have bills to pay to our Savior. We are asked instead to offer our hearts to God. God wants our love. He doesn't require our money. The tax we pay into the kingdom of heaven runs in the currency of loving kindness. What we are given in the form of a repeat tax refund from God, that being the gift of grace that keeps on coming, is what we are asked to accept and to then return in kind. God's got something for you that the government doesn't. Jesus is asking us to see that and to trust it so we can understand our civic duties as Christians differently as God intended. We are to give love as we are able. Whatever form that takes for you is what the Lord of Lords asks of you. Maybe your labor of love comes from hard work, and you then want to share your coins with Caesar as much as you want to share them with the church. Those coins that you offer to God are given in love, not out of obligation like a tax. Tithes and offerings aren't perfunctory like that. Similarly, if you give your time, you do so because you choose to. You want to share the love you've been given first by Christ with others by showing signs of Jesus' love in the form of this church's mission. Your time and talents are gifts you give as members of the kingdom of heaven and as members of this church, but they are not obligatory like a tax. So ask yourself, how are you giving to the kingdom of heaven? Are you investing that refund check from on high wisely? I'm pretty sure God will forgive you if not, but trust and believe that your love will only grow exponentially if you give back in the currency of the kingdom as you are able. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
You transcend all nations, Lord. You, God, own our hearts in a way that asks nothing of us but that we be inspired by the love you've given us. The love that's taken up real estate in our spirits, Lord. Help us to see that that territory, that sacred space, that you have carved out in each of our spirits is yours, God. It comes from you. It comes from Christ. Lord, help us to honor that which we've been given by giving back as we are able. As we seek to give unto the kingdom of heaven, Inspire our hearts anew to give as we have first received, which is bountifully. Help us to give repeatedly, consistently, and wholeheartedly. Lord, help us to give as though we were loved, as though we were choosing to give, as we see Jesus give freely again and again as you gave loaves and fishes to your people, Lord. Help us to give differently, not to give as though we were being taxed, God. We need your help to do exactly that. We can't do it alone, Lord. We do it together with your help and with those who surround us who are also working to give unto your kingdom, Lord, these devoted members of your church. As we pray boldly this morning, asking for your help, God, for ourselves, we also pray for others in need. Help, Lord, those who are in need of more love, more grace, more mercy. Help those among us who need to feel your power in tangible ways. Those in our hearts who we know need your salvation now more than ever. God, hear and receive our prayers this morning for those who are on our hearts and minds but remain unnamed and those who we name among our beloved family for Aaron Taylor, for Diana Hunden, Mia Petlicky, Dan Nelnick, the Egans, the Heagles, the Ajmals, Elvis Love, Laura and Richard Bass, Don Jekka, Matt Kersey, the family of Jim Sawa, Charles Lowe, and Brucey Talcott. Lord, we pray for these folks, especially today, asking that you alone in your almighty power give them that which they ask of you in prayer and that we ask of you in supplication together today. We ask these things specifically, but we also pray them together, as your son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
what that is. Thank you. Thank you. Family of God, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and bring you peace. Now and forevermore. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.